A young woman on her way home is walking down a city street, and just like most nights, the downtown empties out after the working day ends, leaving the streets empty of both cars and pedestrians. She hates when she has to close the shop and walk to her bus stop alone, and she is excited that in just another week, she will be starting a new job that's just around the corner from where she lives. She just has to get through these last few nights of being the last one at the store and having to walk home alone. Her more immediate concern now, though, is that her music has stopped. The young woman takes her phone out to check it. Dead. She must have forgotten to plug in the charger. She hates when she does that. Now she'd have to spend the bus ride staring out the window at nothing. What was that? The woman looks up from her phone. Did she see someone? She turns around and sees something on the other side of the street. It's dark, and all she can make out is a big, shadowy figure. She doesn't stare for long, though, and starts to walk again, picking up her pace slightly. She can hear the sound of footsteps and glances over her shoulder. The person across the street is moving too, and they seem to be matching her pace, avoiding any streetlights to remain in darkness. She starts to move a little quicker, and so do they. The young woman grips the pepper spray in her pocket. She doesn't know what this person is doing or what they want, but she's going to be ready for them. She keeps walking and glances over her shoulder again. They're crossing the street towards her now. She ducks into an alley, and as soon as she's around the corner and out of sight, she starts to run. She sprints through the alley as fast as she can. She looks behind her, frightened of what she might see, but no one is there. Maybe she was wrong and they weren't following her, but she's not about to stop running and find out. She emerges from the alley still running as hard as she can. She reaches her bus stop and finally stops to catch her breath. She checks her watch. The bus should be pulling up right now, but it's nowhere to be seen. She looks around, and what she does see is a shadowy figure coming out of the alley, and it's coming straight towards her. She backs up into the bus stop and takes the pepper spray out of her pocket, her finger ready on the trigger. The shadowy figure keeps moving towards her when suddenly the dark street is lit up. The woman looks behind her to see her savior. It's the bus. She turns back to see the shadowy figure retreating to the alley as if the light is pushing it away. The woman breathes a sigh of relief and finally lets some of the tension in her body release as the bus comes to a stop in front of her. The door swings open and the woman steps inside. I've never been so happy to get on the bus, she says to the driver as she scans her transit card. The driver doesn't respond though. In fact, he doesn't react to her at all. He just keeps staring straight ahead. The woman doesn't push it though. She's just happy to be on the bus, even if it is completely empty. She heads to the back of the bus and takes a seat. As the bus pulls away, she can almost swear she could see the shadowy figure standing in the alley, watching her. The bus rumbles along the empty city streets as the woman looks out the window and takes deep breaths, trying to calm herself after her harrowing ordeal. After a while, she notices that the bus doesn't seem to be stopping as much as it normally does, or at all for that matter. Did they change the route? Or did she get on the wrong bus? They are approaching her stop though, so it doesn't matter, and she reaches up to pull the cord. A bell chimes and the stop requested light illuminates in the front of the bus, but the driver doesn't show any sign of stopping or even slowing down. She pulls the cord again, but still no reaction. As she sees her building go by, she calls out, hey, this is my stop, but the driver doesn't acknowledge her at all. She stands up and walks to the front. Didn't you hear me? This is my stop. Still no reaction from the driver. Hey, I said, she reaches out and grabs his shoulder, spinning him towards her only to find herself staring into the eyes of a fresh corpse. The woman screams and jumps back as the driver slumps forward towards her. She's terrified by the dead body, as well as the fact that the bus will crash, but when she looks at the steering wheel, she sees that it is continuing to move on its own. The woman is in a full-blown panic now. She screams and pounds on the door, but it won't open. The engine roars as the bus starts to pick up speed. She doesn't know what to do and runs to the back where she tries the rear door, but it doesn't budge either. The bus speeds up even more, whipping around corners and tossing her from side to side. She's thrown to the ground and hits her head. Her eyelids feel like they weigh a hundred pounds, and she struggles to keep them open. She manages to stay awake, though, and as she looks up in a daze, staring at the ceiling of the bus, she can see a green gas emanating from the vents. It's the last thing she sees before her eyes close for good. The bus finally comes to a stop in a deserted area of the city. The vehicle raises slightly as, one after another, each wheel appears to unfold, revealing them to be long, black, spindly legs. 
The bus stands up on these insectoid appendages as its roof splits into two massive wings. The bus then leaps up into the sky, spreading its wings, and flies off into the night. How could this young woman have known that after escaping danger, that her rescuer would be something worse? Much worse. Unfortunately for her, she had just willingly stepped onto an instance of SCP-2086, a deadly and terrifying anomaly that hides in plain sight as it stalks and hunts its human prey. SCP-2086 is the designation the SCP Foundation has given to a species that appears to belong to the arthropod phylum, a group that also includes arachnids and crustaceans. These strange creatures differ from most of their lobster and spider brethren in that they make use of an advanced form of camouflage to move among modern society unseen. Adult SCP-2086 instances all resemble some sort of public transportation vehicle, with the exact make, model, year, and branding varying from instance to instance. SCP-2086 instances move about the streets of our cities foraging for food, and at first glance, they are virtually indistinguishable from the standard transit vehicles they are mimicking. Close examination of them, though, will reveal that the steel, wood, plastic, and glass they are composed of aren't those materials at all, but a form of specialized chitin, which is the substance that makes up the hard exoskeleton of many insects and other arthropods. And that's not the only aspect of SCP-2086 that isn't actually what it appears to be. The wheels on the bus may go round and round, but they also are capable of unraveling into long, thin legs that create a very imposing image when SCP-2086 is standing up at its full height. The roof, too, is able to unfurl into a set of giant insectoid wings, and after leaping into the air with its powerful legs, the wings will spread and the bus can take flight, which appears to be its preferred method of travel when it is not in its camouflaged hunting mode. Its headlights, too, are an entirely biological mechanism, consisting of two large bioluminescent optical organs similar to those possessed by SCP-015-IT and SCP-745. Dissections of SCP-2086 specimens have shown them to have an entire system of organs, including a heart, brain, and stomach, which are found beneath the flooring in the creature's interior chamber. SCP-2086 appendages are not just used for locomotion, though and they have been observed as being able to use them for fine object manipulation. This fact was learned when they were observed building crude shelters from scrap materials at their nesting grounds. More on these nests and the terrifying events that take place there later. When SCP-2086 is not at its nest, it engages in its foraging behavior. Typically, an SCP-2086 instance will fly to the start of a route and begin driving along city streets, picking up human passengers who willingly enter the creature's inner chamber thinking that it is a standard bus. Along with its exoskeleton closely resembling a real vehicle, SCP-2086 has one more particularly gruesome trick to fool would-be passengers into becoming its prey. A bus that drives itself would lead many to think twice about stepping on board, so SCP-2086 makes use of a decoy driver, which is actually a human corpse encased and preserved in a shellac-like substance. Smaller, fibrous appendages protrude from the front seat and into the corpse, which hold it in place and are even capable of manipulating the corpse, giving it the appearance of movement as it drives the bus. Once SCP-2086 has gathered up what it considers to be enough victims, a number that appears to vary from instance to instance, it will release a noxious gas from its interior vents. The gas produces an effect in humans similar to chloroform, and everyone on board will be rendered unconscious. The creature, now filled with its prey, does not feed on the humans trapped inside it though. Instead, it will take them to its nesting grounds, which is where the real horror begins. These nesting grounds are most often localized in scrap and junkyards that have fallen into disuse or are completely abandoned, and it is in these nests that the juvenile instances of SCP-2086 are found. While a full-grown instance can weigh as much as 17,000 kilograms, which is the approximate curb weight of a normal bus, extensive field research and observation into SCP-2086 has led to the identification of the smaller, juvenile instances, which are much smaller than their adult counterparts, weighing under 200 kilograms. But they don't stay this size for long. When an adult SCP-2086 arrives back at the nest with its interior chamber filled with human prey, it will open its doors and allow the juvenile members to enter inside of it so they can feed and grow. Once inside, a juvenile will remove a passenger from the bus and take them outside. 
The effects of the chloroform gas will often begin to wear off at this time, but by this point, it is already too late. The juvenile instance will then proceed to force the human into a hole located under their hood. This leads to a sort of digestive tract that connects to its inner chamber where the driver's seat is located. Small, hair-like appendages will then emerge from the seat and protrude into the prey's body, which hold them in place in the driver's seat and trap them there, while at the same time acting as feeding tubes, draining the blood from the now-doomed passenger. Once the person has been completely drained of blood, the feeding tubes will begin secreting a saline solution as the internal compartment fills with a shellac-like substance, and the effects of both combine to effectively embalm and preserve the corpse, which will serve as its own decoy driver once it enters adulthood. And this process happens quite quickly. A newborn SCP-2086 will reach adulthood in just one week, provided that it has had access to nutrients at which point it will begin searching for new sources of prey for its own offspring, of which it will likely have plenty. 2086 instances become capable of reproduction at 8 days, and females are able to produce up to 20 offspring, but their lives are quite short, with their entire life cycle usually lasting just 12 to 15 days. Prior to feeding and beginning the process of becoming a full-size adult, juveniles will also leave the nest and will covertly move about the city, removing bus stop signposts and relocating them, often creating a route that leads back to its own nest. These are the routes that adult instances will then typically follow as they hunt for more prey to bring back to their colony. SCP-2086 instances have been found in metropolitan areas around the world, and news reports are closely monitored by the Foundation for missing persons that had recently used public transport, with Foundation field agents being dispatched to potential high-threat areas to investigate further. Any nests that are discovered have their locations condemned, if they weren't already, and demolished using chemical explosives. Previously, an effort was made to capture and contain live instances of SCP-2086, and currently the Foundation has five such specimens in its custody, which are stored in a converted airplane hangar. Due to their short lifespans and high rate of reproduction, the amount of live specimens contained at any given time can vary widely, and will often depend on the number of available D-Class personnel who can serve as drivers. Terminated specimens are either destroyed or sent to a specialized cold storage container at a secure site for further biological research. SCP-2086 continues to be one of the most dangerous anomalies for common, everyday users of public transportation, and the SCP Foundation has classified it as Keter. While identified colonies are able to be destroyed with minimal effort once discovered, there is no telling how many nesting grounds still remain in the wild. So the next time you're about to board a bus, pay extra careful attention to it. Or you may find that your bus is rerouting you somewhere you never wanted to go. Now go and watch the file on another case of automotive terror, SCP-745, The Headlights. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to learn about the next anomaly from the SCP Foundation's classified archives.